Going to the moon with the Gemini spacecraft was actually a real plan set out by NASA in the early 1960s. What if I told you that NASA's race to the moon almost didn't involve Apollo? It sounds unbelievable, right? But it was a very real possibility. This is what we are looking at today on Vintage Retrospect. It might sound really bonkers that taking a spacecraft with the room of a small car all the way to the moon was something NASA was really considering. The idea was to see how far the Gemini spacecraft could actually go. This was also a way for McDonnell, the company behind the development of Gemini, to see not only how far the craft could go in distance, but also how far the technology could be pushed to achieve lunar capable goals. Forget everything you thought you knew about Gemini. The Gemini we know was small, cramped, and built for low Earth orbit. But Gemini engineered for the moon? <laughs> That is the untold story about a spacecraft designed not only just to reach the moon, but to land there. So let's talk about the original plan. The Gemini capsule designed for two astronauts was already proving its reliability, versatility, and was rigorously tested on the Titan II rocket. This was its primary launch vehicle, proving its robustness and capability to handle the stresses of launch. By the way, please check out my Titan II video on why I think it's the best vintage rocket ever. The idea was to scale up this proven design, adapting it for the C-5 rocket, which later became the Saturn V. McDonnell engineers thought they were onto something massive, a verified lunar capability. The standard Gemini capsule weighed in at about 8,500 pounds or 3,850 kilograms for its low Earth orbit missions. It was slightly larger than the Mercury capsule due in part that it had an extra seat. But the proposed lunar variant? It would have been significantly revamped. Engineers were looking at a spacecraft equipped expanding life support systems, more robust heat shielding for lunar reentry, and enhanced communication systems to stretch the Gemini spacecraft's technology to reach the moon. More specifically, the surface module would hold the navigation, environmental, and electrical systems. The further end from the surface module would have been the larger tapered section called the terminal landing module. This would also include the systems needed to land on the moon, most importantly the landing engines, reaction control thrusters, landing legs, and shielding from lunar rock splashback from its propulsive landing. The fact that engineers seriously considered this and drew up plans speaks volumes about NASA's commitment to going to the moon. So if Gemini was so capable, why did Apollo win the moonshot? It really came down to a few critical factors. First, payload capacity and mission architecture. Apollo's sheer size propelled by the monstrous Saturn V rocket allowed for a much more robust and flexible lunar mission profile, specifically the Lunar Orbit Rendezvous, also LOR for short. LOR involved a command module, a service module, and a dedicated lunar lander, allowing for separate vehicles to handle different phases of the mission. This was far more efficient than a direct ascent with a single massive lunar Gemini. Secondly, Apollo's three-person crew and its modular design offered more backup systems and greater overall redundancy and safety. The deep space environment presented entirely new challenges that Apollo was built from the ground up to address. The Gemini lunar architecture, however, ultimately faced a harsh reality check. While brilliant engineers pushed the idea, it was ultimately shot down by Jim Webb, the NASA administrator. Congress made the case that all the money needed to go to Apollo due to various budget considerations basically retrofitting and re-engineering Gemini to fly on a new rocket like the Saturn V, when it was already perfectly integrated with the Titan II, would have been a massive waste of money and resources. Why spend billions trying to force a square peg into a round hole when Apollo was already being developed as a purpose-built lunar vehicle designed from the ground up for the Saturn V? The decision, while perhaps disappointing to some, was a pragmatic one ensuring that resources were focused on the most efficient and promising path achieving President Kennedy's monumental goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. So what do you think would have happened considering the alternate timeline that Gemini would have landed on the moon? What would our space program look like today? Or would the Soviets have beat us to the moon? Let me know down below your thoughts and check me out on Orbital Edge News, where it's all things modern space and fun discussions. Don't forget to subscribe so that people who thought Project Gemini was some progressive flight test can realize there were more moving parts behind the entire moon ambition. I am your host Chad, and I will see you out on the launch pad.